Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. Hope you had a great weekend. Well, it is in that weekend that uh, we, we, we sort of have seen, what do you call it now? Is it speculation? A ministerial list is beginning to emerge. Uh, nobody actually put it out there in the public space, but um, you know, newspapers, journalists have a way of getting their information. And so well, as the speculation goes, let me continue to use the word, uh, uh, as the speculation goes, uh, some people have actually been screened even though they've been sworn to secrecy. Uh, when reporters try to confirm with them if it was the case, uh, mums the word, not very many of them. Nobody, in fact, was uh, talking. But we've seen all sorts of names in the place. Uh, you probably, you know, you've heard of Odumegu, uh, you've heard of Falano, you've heard of Wale Edu. Uh, these are all names on the list. A whole host, a long list of names, Malami and, and all those kind of guys. Um, uh, you probably have your own idea uh, given the criteria, because uh, the president's body language has for quite a while uh, indicated that, one, he's going to want to work with uh, people who are inherently honest and uh, people, to paraphrase the president, people who he's comfortable with. Uh, with. With that kind of a backdrop, people are going to be screening the list when it eventually is announced to see, okay, let's see those guys that now match up to the exacting uh, Buhari standards. And in that connection, um, I, I have uh, Fasi Yusuf, Dr. Fasif Yusuf, uh, apart from being a public affairs commentator, is a political communication uh, consultant and a fellow, uh, Department of Mass Communication of the University of Lagos. Um, thank you very much. He's also a legal practitioner. Let me chuck that in because I say Dr. Fasi. Don't think he, if you got a headache, you can't talk to him. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much, Vasi, for my coming on the my, program. My pleasure. My Indeed. Pleasure. Always my pleasure. Yeah. Uh, the, the list, what, what do you make of the list? Uh, we, w first of all, would you say I'm correct to consider it a speculation list? Yeah, it's a speculative list. It's mm. in the realm of uh, speculation. Mm. And I think uh, in this sort of situation, you know, we, uh, media may we have a way of nosing around for news. <laughs> uh, some may be true, some may not. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, there's, uh, there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is the case. And um, when we look at the, the, the list, uh, the speculative list such as we have, um, a, a lot of those, um, f former Governor Olagunsoyi Oyinjilala, he's also uh, said to be in there. Um, by and large, does it conform to the uh, parameters that Buhari's stance has sort of uh, set up? Well, if you go by the antecedents or the pedigree of uh, Colonel uh, Prince Ola Gunzoyo Yulala, mm -hmm. one time governor of Lagos State, um, commander in the Maiduguri, uh, former governor of Fortune State. Well, whatever anybody may say about him, I mean, nobody has come out to prove any wrongdoing against him. And I, as a lawyer, uh, even if there's an accusation, uh, proving that allegation, lies with the person being uh, who is accusing mm. the other of, I mean, of a, a wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, I don't think uh, he has any case with uh, the EFC or ICPC or indeed the Nigerian Police Force or any of the security agencies. And again, uh, nobody has even reported him or perhaps uh, we don't add in the media that uh, he has been called to answer some questions. So to that extent, but the only aspect that I would want to uh, imagine is uh, if uh, the president is saying that uh, we want to do away with uh, recycled uh, uh, Nigerians, then perhaps uh, uh, my good brother, Yulala, is one of the most recycled uh, men in this country. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, oh, but, uh, but then it's not been confirmed. So, no, no. It, so we can just talk about uh, the, uh, the, the, the speculation and that uh, it's not confirmed yet. So if Indeed. it's confirmed, perhaps uh, we'll be in a position to really see. You, you know, that's an interesting point you bring up because our Nigerians have complained for quite a while that, look, we, we just are recycling people in this town. Well, I mean, in, yes. in the way we do a things. control about uh, 60 million yes, people. Yes, we keep to on... Get, uh, to get 36 people to, it, to serve you should not be a problem. It shouldn't be a problem. Uh, fresh people. Fresh, fresh, uh, fresh people. Um, the, also on that uh, speculative list, uh, according to the press, uh, former Chief of Army Staff, uh, Lieutenant General Abdul Rahman Dambazu, retired. He's in there too. Uh, as is indeed is 
is an ex uh, yeah. chief executive of the Federal Inland uh, Revenue. Uh, uh, my friend. Uh, yes, uh, Mrs. Uh, Omoi, uh, Omoigi yes. uh, Okaru. Okaru. Um, you know, and I have mentioned Wale Edun, former finance commissioner in Lagos State uh, back in the day. Um, so there's plenty of scope, and um, Buhari having an eye, I think, to do things the right way. He probably is not unaware of, of the charge by most Nigerians that for too long, government has just been a handful of people, you know, metaphorically speaking, yeah. recycling themselves. Mm -hmm. This might be an opportunity to break out of that mold and show us what other... Uh, uh, Patutomi is also in there for yes. whatever, you know, we... we but we, we, we'll, we'll wait and see exactly how it goes. But here is a clear opportunity for the president to break with our tradition, as he seems to be doing in a number of other cases. Yes. Uh, uh, who, who would you think, uh, we've seen the list, but looking long over the, uh, the fair at our disposal, who are the kind of people that you would have thought that going by their public you know, presence, these are the kind of people. Well, Professor Issei Sage, for instance, he's already occupied in a, different, in a particular capacity, but yes. are there names that you would have thought would, would uh, be able to serve Nigeria? If given an opportunity, course, of course there are many. But yeah, it's not for me here yeah, now to market anybody or to 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 mention Well, that, yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I really, well, I mean, I, I'm not in that position to, to to do that for the president. I'm not one of his advisors, and I don't think I belong to the political <laughs> class that will determine for the president who to appoint or who not to appoint. But the pro, the, the situation is, I think we must have some certain laid down criteria. There are some uh, issues that we need to be addressed in terms of uh, credibility, in terms of uh, the economy, in terms of uh, corruption, in terms of uh, rejigging the economy, and in terms of uh, the, the disposition of uh, the, 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 the appointees. Mm -hmm. We're talking about people who have navigated a number of uh, areas and they've been found to be above board, like Caesar's wives, that they are actually above board. So we are not expecting people that uh, will drag us back or we want to do the, the whole thing the same way. I expect a, a different result. So we want people who are proactive, intelligent, who are nationalistic, and who are imbued with the fears of the Almighty God. Mm. And also they know the, the, the needs of the present and future uh, Nigeria. You know, uh, you, you, you trust us, we Nigerians, we will have our say. If you don't have a proper forum, then there's always the pepper soup joint. We yes. will have our say. Of course. And uh, as you know, back in, you know, uh, 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 the names like uh, Fashola and Fayemi also were coming. We're bandied. Uh, bandied. I love that word. Yes, we're no. bandied all over the place. Uh, not, uh, Fayemi is uh, uh, not, not very. Not, no mention of them. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, well, there are several school of thoughts. You know, in this Amici, for instance, uh, also. Uh, mm. In this sort of situation, uh, people will say so many things. I mean, as I said, you know, all in the realm of uh, speculation. Yeah. And some people have said that uh, the list will come out in droves, or perhaps uh, um, one after the other. In that, dribbles? Yes, mm. that uh, we're not going to have the, either the tactics six names. At go. Yes. Oh, oh, that, okay. You think? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what, I mean, a lot of, I mean, if you read uh, uh, the minds of uh, uh, the presidency or perhaps uh, the media, from what we are hearing, all the, all the taxes names will not be available at the same time. But I think uh, the, the major ones that are critical to the nation before the final implementation of the Joda uh, led. Uh, Transition Committee's uh, report. Don't forget that report has over 800 pages. And before then, there are a lot of uh, uh, committees set up. Even the immediate past administration uh, wanted a rationalization of the uh, MDAs, uh, that is, ministries, departments, and agencies mm. of government, mm. because most of them were just duplicating the, the, the activity, their activities. Uh, so they've not taken a decision on that. We don't know the number of ministries, we don't know the number of departments, we don't know the number of agencies government will have. And therefore, it will, it, will, it, will, it will not be expedient for all the ministers to be appointed to go unless the president has been able to fix all these things. And again, don't forget, it's also extending to the uh, legislature. 
Because if you don't know the number of ministries, if you don't know the number of departments, if you don't know the number of agencies, it will be difficult for, for this, the upper and the lower chambers to really determine the number of committees they're going to have. Because at the end of the day, they must be seen to be in tandem with each other. I mean, there must be a, a congruence between both. Otherwise, if the executive is saying this and the, the legislature is also doing something else, then at the end of the day, there will not be a symbiotic uh, relationship. Um, uh, these names, these interesting names, uh, we, we know we know a lot of those people, uh, most of them. Uh, Odumego is uh, also in the one time from the, from the private sector. Yeah, yes, yeah, from the private sector. He's yes. a technocrat, he, um, and um, he he had, pro he had problem. He, well, he, he had to resign. <laughs> yes. he, he he resigned after criticizing. Um, you know, some said he was booted out. Well, some say he, he was booted out. Uh, some also say he resigned and took off for the U.S. Uh, but but now it would appear um, he, he is back. Or uh, he's to be rehabilitated or what? Well, uh, what, what, well uh, why, did he, why, why did he have to step aside from the scene, so to speak? It was because he was openly critical, and I think he said something along the lines of population census figures being manipulated, and uh, he spoke far too forthrightly uh, for the Nigerian politician, and uh, uh, that really scared people. Well, that was the own assessment. Some would say that he spoke recklessly. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so, some said he opened his mouth too wide. Some said some some said that. Yes. Uh, some some said it was it was right. So it exactly. all depends on the, the, your viewpoints. Now, when Odumegu was speaking, he didn't care whose ox was God uh, when he had to say his piece. Uh, we've also I I don't know what do you think about the president. It doesn't look like the president will pull punches either. Well, I think uh, the president to me, I mean, from what I've seen so far, is uh, more matured. It's like an old wine. That much just with time, mm. so he's been very careful in what he was doing. He's not uh, what he was in uh, 1984. Exactly. Yeah, up to 1985 before he was uh, booted out. Oh yeah, he, I mean clearly yeah, he's, so, much, he's much different. And uh, the Bahari that uh, we know uh, does not talk much, mm. uh, but his body language speaks volume. It, it does. And uh, yeah, the people around him does uh, uh, the the talking. Uh, no, uh, President Buhari has definitely changed. I mean, especially when you look at the instance where um, the point is made in all those write-ups that uh, Femi Falana was jailed by Buhari 30 years ago yeah. uh, in the course of, you know, this whole political uh, landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, and here he is now in the speculative list as a, a possible... Uh, Minister of uh, Justice and Attorney General, although he's not the only one in there. In fact, so the write-ups go, uh, whereas uh, there are those who are pushing for him, uh, it is also said that the president is uh, uh, sort of uh, more, more favorably disposed towards uh, Malami. So there are all of that in there, but to, yes. to the, the point that he is a changed person, yes. this is a person who clamped Femi Falano in jail. And now this is the same person. That was, that was then. That was then. These that, circumstances are different. Oh, this is what we're, exactly. So, so in terms of a change, there can hardly be a more radical 360. Yes, yes, because you see, when you look at governance, at any point in time, some leaders may p perform poorly at a point in time. But given some other circumstances, they may perform better. So you, if we talk about the political landscape, at that time, it would, we had a military administration that came in uh, sensibly because uh, there was massive corruption mm. and that uh, the, the, the system broke down. I mean, and there was an uh, anomie within the polity and therefore came on board and thought uh, a lot of radical things should be done. And those who were not in support of those things, or those that were constituted, a stumbling block. Yes, because Falano is a human rights and, crusader. Yes. And so. And don't forget that the same Omari community, Ghanaian family, was also there. That's right. And he was in support of Buhari. And the, as at that time, the Nigerian Bar Association said nobody, none of their members, should represent uh, any clients. As at that time, within the military tribunal and all that. And all that. But yeah, the, the legal environment defied that and they went ahead to defend them. So it all depends on where we are and they perhaps uh, the way we rationalize things at, a, at, any, at any point in time. So it is not that uh, perhaps uh, you have a rigid approach to politics or to economy. And don't forget that even in politics themselves, I mean, the, the politicians themselves, they've been cross-carpeting, they've been crisscrossing 
Exactly. Crisscrossing. Uh -huh. that, that, that is true. In, in fact, now that you brought, you brought that up, uh, again, well, actually we've mentioned Falano's name quite a bit here, but uh, I just wanted to illustrate the point that you, you just said uh, political parties and all of that. Now, Falano is not a known APC uh, member. and yeah, I hear He's a supporter. He's a supporter. Yeah. And though there are those, the uh, sort of power block from... His body his, language speaks APC. <laughs> indeed, indeed. But there are those from his native Ekiti state who are said to be opposed to any yeah, such because they, they, simply they, because he's not a party member. No, that, uh, look, look, that he did not, he did not join them in building APC. Uh -huh. And perhaps they will think that uh, he's come to rape where he did not so. You know, politicians they, they, they normally think that uh, well, whatever they've done is for a purpose. Yes, they've not seen it as an opportunity to no, serve selflessly. They must be paid. They believe back. that they must rape from that. So and they believe that uh, with Falano being there, perhaps uh, there will, uh, will be nothing come to, to, to them, to the constituency, <laughs> or perhaps uh, to survive them. But unfortunately for them, the, the new sheriff in town is saying that, look, the era of patronage is gone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Well, well, so you say. We need it, it remains to be seen. No, no. The era, you know, because have, have, the, you the, the, some, have you not seen some sanity within the system? A lot of sanity. That's why the fact that uh, we were, like, like the Americans would say, we haven't seen no nothing yet. <laughs> well, one moment, please. Yes. Uh, Monday wants to join this conversation. Uh, Monday calling in from, uh, I believe, is it Ipaja? From K2. Uh, from K2. Good morning, Monday. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Yes, sir. What, what the man is doing, he's trying to do good thing anyway. He's, he's trying, trying to, to do, do good thing. He's trying to do a good thing. Oh, okay. Yes, I think I applaud Buhari. Uh, I commend him. He's trying to do good thing. So, so all those names that you read in the papers yesterday, maybe Saturday too, you, 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 you're happy with it, by and large? I think Monday has gone. But, 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 well, again, this is something that's coming up. It would appear that a lot of people are, are trusting Buhari uh, from the things that they say they just sort of trust Buhari to do the right thing because um, the kind of statement that Monday has just made, say all the man is trying to do is trying to do a good thing. Uh, that must be a major asset to a leader where you yes, have the trust I, of the people. I, I think uh, because of my appearing on this program or elsewhere, I said it even before the election that for the present time, if Buhari did not win, then you can be thinking of Arab Spring in Nigeria. Because as far as we know for now, he's the most credible uh, mm -hmm. politician that we can rely upon. Okay. That the salvation of Nigeria belongs to. Okay. So if he fails, then God forbid, we must well be saying. Failure is not an option. I'm, no, I'm, I'm sure you say that. Yes, I, sure I, yeah, I said that. that. Yes. No, and so what we're having now is. It should not be anything strange to those of us that have been able to analyze this situation. And those Nigerians that are also keen, even, you don't know, see even PDP members saying that, look, yes, you can fix it. Okay. You can fix Nigeria. Yeah, indeed. Um, Reverend Dominic, good morning, sir. Good morning, Yori. How are you? Thank you very good much morning. for calling in, Reverend. Uh, please, let me say this. I saw this list in Saturday, Sunday, and this morning. There's one thing I called the mischief of the press, electronic press, or printing press, sorry. Mm -hmm. Those names you, you, see, you saw since Saturday, I bet my life you won't see anybody in this cabinet. Because immediately the press begins, they start forming their own candidates. And the Buhari we know has the mind of his own. The whole people they have trained to SS, there's no Nigeria that knows their name. I'm telling you the truth. There's no Nigeria that knows their name. And again, I had to again say that he, he, may, he may use fresh blood in this government. The body language of this president is not sure so. He took a man of over 70 years to custom. Hmm. He, he still trusts his old ally. To him, 290, 2,000 and politicians are all corrupt. That's my own feeling. Maybe his old ally in the 80s are still disciplined. They may be 80, they may be 70. So I don't see new blood in this particular minister. He will see you people he knows. But all the people you see in the paper, let me give you an example. Before the appointment of kitchen cabinet, Pastor Bakary was all over everywhere to become first staff. 
Where do you see Pastor Bakari Chida as a chief of staff? I will know where he went to. Just, just discuss those, those, those things in paper. None of them will go to the cabinet. Well, I'll call you back after the cabinet nominated by next week. Hmm, hmm. Well, well, thank, thank you, Reverend. Thank if, you, Reverend if, Dominic. If, if I may react to what you said. Yes. You see, um, there is agenda setting theory of the media. You see, the media can set agenda. It does not mean that the agenda being set is the proper one or the proper thing. Okay. But at least it's to elevate discussion. Of course. Uh, to the level where people have informed opinion or where people can make up their minds as what they want. Nobody has confirmed the list. And as, as we said on this program, it's mere speculation. It's in the realm of speculation. It is. And uh, it, it, to some extent, academic exercise and all that. And mm -hmm. it's also to set the stage for further, Indeed. Uh, further uh, discourse or discussion on the, on the matter. And perhaps for Nigerians to get ready for the type of people, uh, uh, leaders that uh, they want uh, to, to serve them. I mean, <laughs> they, so you cannot condemn the, the, my constituency because we, are, I mean, because we are doing our job. I mean, so, so what's the press for? Exactly. Uh, join to inform, to educate, and to entertain. Indeed. Uh, Joy from Suri Lere, good morning. Good morning, Dr. Well, I, I really like what the Wari is doing. Okay. I pray that even when the Wari is office, God will give us somebody like him to succeed in as if we ever have somebody like him. Whatever he is doing now is not in now. I appreciate what he is doing, even if he takes, let him take his time. The list, the speculative list is okay by me. Pass it to me and the rest of them that are in that list, I am comfortable with them. I, I appreciate him and I pray God will give him more wisdom to, to, to take Nigeria to the highest is always for all right good then. morning good morning and thank you very much for calling in joy that's one more nigerian yes. uh, publicly putting on display their trust for yes. buhari well, to lead us right to the promised land to the promised land right. uh, here we are I, I like the point that the reverend put out there he was a bit annoyed about the media you know uh, what he said was the attitude but you've adequately responded to that, that that's what we do I mean, uh, that's what we do we we start conversations we help yes. people understand um, uh, how to uh, think well, about I mean, an issue and arrive uh, at their own we conclusions are the dog of the society uh, exactly. the commission says we are all government accountable to the mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. they're able to talk and all mm -hmm, the right mm -hmm. so if you're saying that uh, the press don't do anything they can imagine a life without the media and in, and in fact, all those all these devices are well known. It just there's an uh, the, uh, this might just well be a controlled sort of a leak to yeah. sort of get responses, uh, fillers. you know, fillers, fillers as to what is going on. Uh, yeah. After all, if government really wanted for that list to be top top secret, yeah. nobody would hear anything. Uh, you can't say that. You, you, you already can't say that. Really? The, oh, I didn't know why being in the DSS. <laughs> when <laughs> when your driver sees you, or when the, your driver drives you to DSS, yeah. Then it was not that something's happening. Okay, what's he go do there? <laughs> and that's how these things happen. Yes, yes. that one means there. Okay, then. Um, then as we say, it is uh, when you don't do it that people will not know. I Once you do it, people will know. Femi from Bagada is on the line. Good morning, Femi. Good morning, Uncle Yari. Thank you for calling, sir. Yeah, I know that list. This is my opinion of it. Mm -hmm. I've listened to Pastor Mr. Ratan at different political positions at different courts. That man is loaded. He has different solutions to different issues. Like when the days of Ghanika him, many of us know him, but we didn't celebrate him. I think giving that man a chance to do a good job better than all the old names that we know. And I'll be glory again. I want you to please on this I want you I want to give you a tax and take this as a good call. On the job contract thing, nobody's talking about it. I trust your media house. You know, Nigerians, by your shop, they are not employed. Some are skillful, but they are underpaid. They are not really well treated. And no media house is doing anything about it. So I know if you pick it up, others will follow up. So I think we need to do this for Nigerians. Okay, well, which topic is that that you're talking about? The underemployment and the contract things in Nigerian labor. Oh, oh, oh okay. Oh, okay. It's across all different sectors. Mm. From banking to telecom, manufacture is all over every sector. And no media is talking about it. Mm. Nobody. 
Chinese are there, they take Nigerians and they them as slavery. The Indians are there, they take us as slavery. And our media are not saying anything about it. Okay. And I trust you guys, if you pick it up, others will fall in line. All right, then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, Femi, for, you know, uh, call, call, calling in. Uh, yet again, we keep on saying, quite frankly, Buhari is in a, in, is, is in a good place uh, for a person who is going to be succeeding, uh, considering that he has this goodwill, he has this support, this trust, uh, and, and so far, um, it, it would appear that he's being proved right. Uh, and he, you just made the point that he's going to be very, very careful. He's not the Buhari of the first time around. Mm -hmm. This is the Democrat now, and um, he, 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 he appears to be doing uh, things according to the law. Now, this man expects people to also do things according to the rules. So it's in the area of systems that probably will be his greatest achievement uh, when he makes it. And I, I'm not saying if he makes it, when he makes it. If he can set up these institutions, that's what everybody keeps on saying, then you let the system run itself. Uh, and those people, these are the people that are being considered I think it's a logical conclusion to imagine that he's actually going, he's getting the team that's going to begin the first steps of that quest. Yeah. Setting up institutions, strengthening them, which we've been saying for the past decade or two, that that is what Nigeria really needs. We don't need new laws. We don't need special courts. Strengthen these institutions. You know, um, our, the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is, the, is one of the most rigid constitutions you can ever think of. It is as inflexible and watertight as what. The, look at what has been happening. To to even amend the constitution has been a problem. Not to talk of to change the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The amendment has been a very difficult thing. Not to talk of changing the constitution. But by and large, what you are starting with. For example, if you look at the anti-corruption advisory uh, committee, it's not new law. It's to assist in checking. I mean, sort of checks and uh, uh, balances within the system. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what uh, that committee is expected to do. And again, I mean, if I may just go back to what the other guy, I mean, the last caller said. The, there's na the National Economic uh, Council, headed by Vice President uh, Yemi Oshima, Oshimbajo. Uh, I mean, uh, with all the governors uh, in place, they, they know the problems of the states. They know the problem of uh, the economy. The only problem of uh, including manufacturing, uh, business, um, mineral resources, corruption, and what have you. And I think those issues have been tackled at that level. So because, I mean, the vice president is in charge of that. And uh, the president and so on is doing certain things. And uh, without these ministers being put in place, it will not expect the bureaucrats uh, to consult the cabinet. Mm -hmm. They are supposed to be the engine room of the government. Mm. And uh, as I said, you know, of uh, this program, that look, the, the civil servants are presently being overexposed. Uh, by now, they should be okay, taken... Okay, you, you think that? that yes. That yes, the civil yes, servants yeah. are yeah, because a, a, a been, bit overexposed. Yes, because uh, there has been a lacuna in the, in the last uh, three months or so. And uh, they've been taking charge. And uh, to the standard, uh, they're saying that, look, the capital projects of about $600 billion in this year's uh, budget has not been implemented. And because there's no cabinet in place, uh, the president cannot do everything. Uh, the, the, the laws are there that is only the National Executive Council, but maybe you can give it anticipatory approval. Mm. But then it, it has to be very careful because it might be misled. But where there's a collective decision within the cabinet, then nobody can hold him responsible. Okay, then. Um, uh, w what we'll do, uh, we'll take a quick break now, uh, but don't go anywhere, please, because we're going to be right back and we'll continue uh, to include your calls as we look at the uh, speculative list of. Uh, upcoming ministers in this September, which the president has given his word, is the date when he will let us know who his cabinet, who is going to constitute his cabinet. Stay with us, please. <laughs> 